Janae Gerard. I'm the author of Off the Rock, and I'm also the creator of Beyond the Baby Trap. And we're here with Dr. Noah Taylor here, who's a radiation oncologist. Thanks for addressing some of our questions, and my group wrote to us and have a bunch of questions for you. Absolutely, so thanks thank for, you. Thanks for being with us. Um, can you briefly touch on the different types of radiation that, sure. you know, for breast cancer? Well, radiation, uh, is standard in two realms. One is when we do breast conservation, uh, we do what's called post lumpectomy radiation, where when a woman has breast conservation, preserves their breast, radiation is very standard to be done to the whole breast after lumpectomy. And the purpose of that is to preserve the breast, prevent recurrence in the breast, so that the results look equivalent to that of mastectomy. And we've done studies over the past 30 years to show that using radiation in that setting to the whole breast after lumpectomy is equivalent to mastectomy and actually even just recently have proven that you have a survival benefit of doing the radiation versus not doing it and just doing the lumpectomy. So that's the standard whole breast radiation. It's been around since the 1970s. There's a newer way of doing that radiation which is called partial breast radiation. So instead of doing whole breast radiation every day, Monday through Friday for six weeks, we tend to do partial breast radiation, which is twice a day for a week, and there's a number of different techniques to do that, the most common with using catheters and this, what's called brachytherapy, or these balloon type treatments. But it shortens that uh, treatment time from six weeks down to one week, twice a day, with a little bit more invasive treatment. Um, but that's a new way to do radiation that's been around for 10, 15 years, but only in highly selective people, not everybody. And the last way we do radiation is doing what's called post-mastectomy radiation. Where women get a mastectomy, and a lot of times you do that for the sole purpose of not having to go through the uh, you know, radiation. But some women need a mastectomy because it's their only option. And then when they have advanced breast cancer, they need radiation after mastectomy anyway. Uh, and that is done more in a standard course every six weeks. So, um so what would a woman expect as far as if radiation is required, right. what does that do to your options as far as reconstruction goes? Do you have to mm -hmm. wait or, you know, how does that impact? Well, we, what we'd like to know is, let's say if you're going to have a mastectomy and it's for more advanced breast cancer, we'd like to know up front whether or not you even need radiation in the future. Uh, so that the best way that women approaching this should meet with a radiation oncologist and their surgeon and a medical oncologist and a plastic surgeon all before they have their procedure. So that way we can start to predict whether or not you might even need radiation after surgery and then uh, may change what exactly we're going to do with reconstruction. So there are certain times we like to actually uh, do the radiation before the reconstruction is done and other times it's, it's okay to do the reconstruction immediately at the time of surgery even when you know radiation is coming along later. So that's an individual decision. It depends on the style of the surgeon, the style of the, uh, the plastic surgeon, exactly what procedure they're going to do, whether it's with a flap or expander or so on. Um, so we'd like to know up front, if possible, and meet with everybody, come up with a customized plan before reconstruction is done. But it certainly is possible to get the reconstruction and then do radiation and the cosmetic result is fine as long as you know that ahead of time. The problem is sometimes we don't know. Sometimes you do surgery, you're not really aware exactly what the situation is, and there are surprises at the time of surgery where you can do surgery with an immediate reconstruction and all of a sudden the pathology is worse than you think. There are lymph nodes there that you didn't know. There's more extensive disease. And now there's more and more indications for post-mastectomy radiation. More studies have shown that to be uh, a significant thing. So sometimes you're caught where you have to do radiation afterwards and you didn't really think you had to. Then we still have good techniques and we've got much better radiation than we did even five years ago to be able to handle that situation and the cosmetic result comes out okay, but it's not as ideal than knowing it up front. Gotcha. Yeah. Now is radiation always required after you do a lumpectomy? Almost always required. There are certain circumstances where it's not, where there's either uh, you have very favorable disease, uh, there's certain circumstances where you're older. But the, really the rule of thumb is if you get a lumpectomy, radiation is required in some form, uh, unless you have a certain exception. Very early stage disease, you're, you're older, and there's some data of women over age 70 or 75 with very good characteristics. But that's something that, once again, if you're thinking along those lines of breast conservation, you have to think radiation goes with it unless you have those certain very specific characteristics. Gotcha. Now, a lot of the people in my group say they get extremely tired when they're going through their radiation treatment. Why does that occur? 
We're not quite sure why it occurs. We, we often monitor the blood counts to make sure you're not anemic. And obviously, if you become anemic during the radiation, that causes your counts to go down. But you know, the, the insurance companies have much higher, much stronger restrictions on using things to help for anemia, like Procrit or these drugs. So even if that's an answer, we often can't do anything about it because those drugs to help boost your counts are, are rare. But still, most other women have this tiredness that we really can't explain. Um, interestingly, there are some uh, alternative physicians and these uh, nutritionists who actually come up with concoctions to help with that radiation-related fatigue, either during treatment or after. It's not been proven to help, but that's something certainly for women to explore. You know, these certain vitamin and other uh, supplement concoctions that can actually help with fatigue. But we don't really understand why that happens. Hmm. Really. Now, does radiation have any effect on other organs like your heart or lungs or...? It, it can. In some of the old studies of using radiation, particularly in the post-mastectomy setting, way back from the 70s and 80s, showed that you know, years later women can have a higher risk of heart and lung problems. Um, but knowing that with the very new technology that we have these days, we really minimize that. Now, we don't have a crystal ball to know that the new techniques we have are going to prevent heart problems, you know, 10, 20 years from now. But, you know, in the old days, radiation had an impact on those organs. These days, we think that that's a very, very minor effect. Uh, that the radiation, particularly these new IMRT techniques or partial breast techniques, or even the standard radiation, which has now become much more sophisticated, should help to minimize that. So I think that you know, women should talk to their physician about that possibility, but I certainly don't think women should be scared off from radiation because of damage to those organs, because the chances of that happening now are much, much, much less than before. Okay. Can you address a little bit about um, skin care? Many people in my group are really struggling with extreme burns, some people right. even to the point where they're not able to use just 100% uh, aloe and things like that. Right. It, what, what's the best thing out there for them to be looking at? Well, first of all, I think that, you know, that the most important thing when you choose a radiation facility is to make sure they have the most modern equipment. That the, you know, certain facilities like ours are able to actually use these more IMRT techniques. These uh, techniques are able to spare the skin much better so that those chances of burns and so on become a lot less than some of the older techniques. But even with the most modern techniques, you still can have some skin issues. And I think the best thing to do is, um, you know, some people use local cream, a, a moisturizing cream, <laughs> even a plain like aloe. <clears throat> you can use this like aloe gels, and um, even people use a plain aloe plants work very well. You want to use you know, the most gentle creams and gentle soaps that you can that aren't, don't have very many fragrances. But I think either pure aloe or a, moisturi a strong moisturizer like Aquaphor works as well as any of the other things. There are certain products that are designed specifically for radiation, that's like radio care and things, but they don't seem to work better than either pure aloe or aquaphor. And I would use those, and then if you have really burns where you actually have peeling skin, using these kind of pads, um, like Vigilon is another type of things that actually can be placed against the skin and help to soothe it, that can really be quite soothing. Uh, but I would start in the beginning to try to choose a facility that has the most modern equipment where they really help to spare the skin, and that may prevent the problem in the first place. Okay, good yeah. tips. I had a, a few people ask me about um, IORT, interoperative right. radiation therapy. Mm -hmm. Can you just address a little bit about what that is and sure. how it's used? What that is is basically a, a extension of this partial breast radiation. So instead of using, for patients who have uh, a lumpectomy, instead of doing the standard whole breast radiation afterwards, for certain highly selected patients where we think that the chance of having recurrence is just in the tumor bed and not more in the whole breast, that instead of doing the partial breast radiation with the catheter, you know, twice a day for a week, that we can actually do a single dose of radiation in the operating room to sterilize the tumor bed before they even leave the operating room. Now, first of all, that's only available in a certain hospitals across the country. Uh, partly because the equipment has to be uh, there, that you have to still be under anesthesia and go right for radiation, or so either the equipment's in the OR or it's able to be accessible. Mm -hmm. So it's really not something that can be used universally across the country. And then secondly, we don't really have that much data to show is this equivalent to even standard whole breast radiation, I mean standard partial breast radiation, let alone whole breast radiation. So it's still experimental at this stage, and, and, but we do encourage women who have access to those facilities maybe to participate in trials to do it. But, once again, it's for very highly selected patients. 
uh, who have a very small tumor with widely negative margins where we feel like they have no risk on the other part of the breast, they can get away with potentially just doing a single treatment in the OR so when you wake up at the end you're done with the radiation. Uh, you may think that though, but then you might come back and have to get more radiation later depending on the final pathology. So it's an attractive option, but it's something that's still experimental. If a woman goes for that, they have to realize that uh, it's something that is experimental. They may have a higher chance later of having recurrence that we don't really know about now. Uh, so I, I right now would only do that under a clinical trial setting where, where a woman is very highly counseled as far as what the advantages are and the disadvantages are, and certainly not for women who have more advanced tumors where you're taking a risk with that type of procedure. Well, thank you so much, Dr. Thank Taylor. you. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you.